All right, guys, welcome back to Off the Couch with the Psych Guys. As always, this is Timothy Meyer. I'm Dr. Constantine Lucan. And today, we're going to talk about uh, how to apologize. And this is coming from two guys who are married, so kind of used to it. Uh, so that's why I think it's just an important concept to cover uh, because, you know, Tim works with couples. I work with couples. Just once you even get to here's the problem and here's how everybody feels, there has to be like a resolution. There has to be some sort of a sincere, I get how I hurt you yeah. and I need, I want to make it better by doing X, Y, and Z, right? So I think it's just so important because I just notice a lot of clinicians, they just focus a lot on the problems, a lot on the problems and mm -hmm. how people feel and, the, and that's all good. But like, but I feel like, okay, and then how do we move forward? So the idea of bridging, talking about problems to setting new ways, you need some sort of an extended way to apologize. Another way of saying to understand how the, the other person was hurt yes. and communicate it in the way that that person can hear the apology. Yes. I just can't stress how that, that's important. To be able to communicate an apology in the way that you're feeling authentic and also lands on the other person. I think today's podcast is really about trying to unpack it, to dissect it a little bit of how that really works. I'm sure, Tim, you have lots of thoughts on this. A, a, a million um, <laughs> from personal and, <laughs> and, and, <laughs> and, and clinical lenses. Because, right. um, you know, we've got to apologize a lot. Um, you know, if, if so, so, so I'm going to, pull on on one point okay. um maybe two but certainly that's it that's all you do <laughs> <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm gonna try to keep this succinct um because it could get complicated but um i'll explain my main thought for, mm -hmm. from from what i said to a lot of couples um i asked them the question i said would you rather be right or together right and i I, I said it as an either or because I think that it is an either or because so often I think what happens, what, what gets in the way of apologizing is people uh, perceive as like apologizing for something as if they're wrong. Right. Or they're like losing a battle right. or a fight or something like that. And I think that we kind of need to get away from that way of looking at it. Mm -hmm. Because if we're looking at it from that, that lens, like right versus wrong, or if it's like a fight or something like that, that I have to win, mm -hmm. um, then you're, not, you're, you're never going to actually apologize because right. you're missing the whole point. Right. And really the whole point is you have to understand how the other person is feeling right. from their point of view and their perspective and then apologize from that stance. Right. So, so, I, so, so my main thing that I'm probably going to talk about is, is moving outside of our stance of like right, wrong in a fight to more of like an empathic put myself in your shoes perspective mm -hmm. so i hear that that's what i'm going to go for but here i want to hear what you but what you were starting to say about like how the apology is and how it's it sounds like what you're going right. to say is like how it's like kind of tailored to the other person well it's it's just it's just a lot of times you you hear uh well i said i'm sorry a thousand times mm -hmm. right i think in couples that happens all the time <laughs> right like well i already apologized for it right but the other person it really didn't land because the other person, so to me, there's two pieces, and I think you're going to take one, I'm going to take the other. One is obviously if the person's ready to hear it, I think that's something you want to mm -hmm. talk about. And I'm going to talk about just have to know your partner. A lot of people probably know the book Five Languages of Love, but I think there's an added one, Five Languages of Apology, because I think it's so important to be able to think through and maybe even discuss how do I apologize in a way that you could hear it? Mm -hmm. that I'm sincere about it, but it lands on you. Because a lot of people do it just in a verbal sort of a way, right? Other people do it, they don't really say it, right? They're quiet during an argument, but their behavior changes. Yep. Other people think that, well, if we hug it out, then it's over, mm -hmm. right? Other people think that, well, if I buy my wife flowers in a, in a balloon or whatever, then that's gonna make all the difference, right? So that might, uh, but at the same time, knowing the language that the person wants to hear it with. Like for instance, I know my wife, you know, it, she, she, she wants to hear it. It's like a verbal thing, mm -hmm. right? You know, maybe my, my thing is, yeah, it's great to say it, but you know, for me, like the change in behavior might be more important. I don't really care for gifts. You know, I don't, you know, hugs is nice, but like, I just need to see changes. And that means to me that you heard, heard what I needed and you understood my hurt for you not doing it. And mm -hmm. now you're doing it. And therefore I feel, aha, she got it, right? While for her, it's really, yes, that's important, but to be able to talk it out, suss it out, making sure that, you know, she feels that I understand the pain. 
right? Like, yeah. so it's, it's, and, and that's so important because sometimes people use, again, this kind of reference to the book a little bit, but like they use the language of apology that they like. Yeah. Right. So, and they kind of assume that because I like it, I, I, I don't even think they kind of give it any thought like, well, this is the way it is. Yeah. Right. And I think that's just it's such a huge um, you don't get as much for your buck by apologizing <laughs> in a way that you'd like to hear it because the other person isn't going to really hear it. Like for me, if someone's apologizing to me and they go on this whole thing about verbal discussing issues, uh, like for me, that doesn't really right. do much. Just need to say, I'm sorry, and I'll do it differently. That's really all I need. And then do it differently. Mm -hmm. Right. So just to kind of highlight this point that you really want to think about whether you're apologizing to your friend or your spouse or your kid or your parents or your boss, whomever it is, just think about maybe even talk a little bit about like, how do they want to hear it? Mm -hmm. uh, I know that might be a little awkward, but just at least put yourself in that shoes that the way you apologize, maybe the way they like to hear it or maybe not. Yep. yep. So to me, that's a really, really important point because working with couples, I just notice it so many mm -hmm. times. Like I already said it. How many times do I have to apologize for that mistake? And the answer is probably like, well, probably like one or two more times, but just like in the way that they want to hear right, it. Right, right. Or, or in, in the way that's actually go, going to help them. Right. It's going to land on them that they could see, oh, she, he or she gets my pain and he's sorry that he caused me this pain. And he's, and there's a sense of like, okay, can I take in and trust that his behavior will change? Yep. Yep, 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 yep. So if, if I'm just going to like pull what sure. you said about your you and your wife, um, you know, if, if you're getting an apology, you don't really care too much about the words, right? right? Um, of course, it, like, it's nice to hear, I'm sorry, I'm sorry that, 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 that I made you feel this way, I'm sorry I shouldn't have X, Y, Z, yada, yada, yada. Um, but that doesn't really hold too much right. weight for you. For you, it's sort of like actions speak louder than right. words. And, and by you seeing that change of behavior, that's how you know, like, that's, that's right. an apology to you. Right. Whereas with your wife, she needs to be heard, understood, right. and you need to probably spend some time like talking with her, communicating right. with her, right. and she feels really heard, understood, and then that's an apology to her. Right, exactly. Right. Exactly. So if she is just simply only talking to you, right. but not changing her actions, <laughs> you're still gonna feel right. hurt, resentful, et cetera, right. exactly. and vice versa. Right. <laughs> but I, I can't even say how right you are about how <laughs> so many people take their love language right. And that's all they do. Right. And that's all they say. And it's like, right. it's not going to work. Right. Like you have to know theirs and you have to communicate that way. Right. Um, you're hundred percent right. Um, where my head was kind of going mm. with this. Um, yeah. So many couples, like they, they come in with, with an argument, mm -hmm. uh, an, an argument, um, a disagreement, a, a fight, you know, you did this and, 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 and you made me feel that way. And it's sort of like, no, but like, but, but, but you did that and you made me feel that way. And, and it really kind of, you know, it happens all the time in the office. It turns into this, no, like, listen to my point. Like, right. like, here's what I say, like, and, and it turns into this, like, just fight where people like, where two people are trying to be heard and, mm -hmm. um, and both people just really want to be apologized to. Right. Right. But the fighting and the argument gets it gets in the way of all of that. Right. Where where people f have this desire to be right rather than to be together. Right. And I think that when folks are in a fight or an argument or, or whatever with their partner, um, we've really got to move ourselves out of that headspace of like, I'd rather be right than together. Right. Right. It's a really hard thing for people to do. Not not easy, especially if there's a lot of hurt especially if there's a lot of hurt and especially if this is their pattern or dynamic right. for a long time. Right. Right. So, <laughs> so I say that to people and I say, would you rather be right or together? And almost everyone says, ah, I'd rather be together than right. And I say, okay, good. And so, um, how do we work on being together? And, you know, and then, and then we, we might start talking about empathizing with the other person and apologizing for something. And it is almost like foreign. Right. And like in that moment where people feel so strongly. Right. And so to, to, to have a person shift their headspace, it, it could be a really hard thing to do. Mm -hmm. But what I stress so much is like, like it, it really doesn't matter so much about the surface level things. Right. It doesn't matter about the milk that was left out or the whatever the heck that the surface level thing is that if, if we go deeper into it, it's sort of being able to acknowledge that you made another person feel right. blank. Right. 
and you're putting yourself in their shoes and you're saying that I can understand that in your shoes and your perspective that you feel X, Y, Z, yada, 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 based off of what I did. Right. And I can empathize with that feeling and I'm sorry about that. Right. It's not that you did something right or wrong. It's right. not that you're right and she's wrong or she's right, right and you're wrong. No, 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 no. Right. It's about getting away from all of that and then putting yourself in your, in your spouse's shoes to understand where they're coming from right. and being in that space. Right. That space will lead to so much more togetherness and all of, and, and everything that we want, whereas the previous stance or headspace just leads to more and more of this. Well, and you're right. It just the, the thing that's coming to mind, because w when you could do that, the other person that who's receiving the apology often softens. Mm -hmm. When they soften, they're more likely to apologize back to you. They're more likely to say, well, maybe it wasn't that big of a deal or I'm OK, maybe with like I understand. Listen, everybody. Uh, leaves milks out or runs late or doesn't text or whatever the case may be. It just softens it a little bit more. And that softening is really where you want to be. Um, one thing that really comes to mind, like almost like a, a apology 2.0 is to get this idea that sometimes people are not ready to hear the apology. Mm -hmm. Right. And the more I work with couples like that, the often underlying issue is about basically trust in whether the the actions will change at some point right mm -hmm. so they can't uh, they can't trust or lean in into the apology and they can't trust or lean in into the behavioral change because there's so much built up from the past that the you know the shorter period of time of a different behavior really doesn't get them to be like you see that all the time in uh let's say infidelity or cheating like that yeah. right? like person cheated for like two years and then they like there's some consistency or transparency right the person who was cheated on doesn't doesn't lean in i mean the person can apologize and be empathetic and understand but at the same time oftentimes that's really not enough Yep. Because right, the second part is to be able to show consistency in behavior. So this person is working on themselves if they're willing yep. for the apology to land. If they're willing for the apology to land. And I think that's such a big piece. Oftentimes that could be dealt in couples work. Sometimes it's individual. Yep. Like are you, where are you with this willingness to be open to even receive the apology? Because if the person isn't open, then it doesn't it honestly doesn't really matter what language you use right because the person is closed uh -huh. right? and that's something to expand on you know usually in couples work or maybe individual just to make sure that the person receiving it is somewhere at least ambivalent mm -hmm. if there's ambivalence maybe i want to take the the apology maybe i don't that's a better space but if it's not landing then that's that's a hard place to be because this person needs to soften at some point or not you know obviously just going to jump in with a quick ambivalence that means just sure. like f uh, feeling two different ways about the same thing oh right 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 so sometimes yes i want to take it in sometimes i don't want to take it in but like but that's that's where you know long uh, you know marriages with long-standing issues are challenging and it takes a long time in therapy because one person you know in order for it to be successful the person that was hurt really mm -hmm. needs to be able to open up to receive it. And if that doesn't happen, that's to me the number one way when couples therapy doesn't work is when the other person is, maybe they started ambivalent, but they closed more, or yeah. if they were closed, and maybe they opened a little, but not enough for, for it to land significantly. So when couples therapists say like, we're here to examine if you could work, yeah. It's because they know that this, this idea of being willing to be open to receive it is so important. Because if that doesn't change, uh, nothing, the relationship can't be sustained. Yep, 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 yep. Um, I think that happens most with infidelity. Infidelity, for sure. Um, because, you know, it, it's a really hard spot to be, you know, to be able to open yourself back right. up to trust right. and, and open yourself up for an apology right. with that amount of hurt. Right really difficult, really challenging. I get it. Um, and you're absolutely right. If it doesn't happen, then it's kind of like if the door is closed and the apologies, right. uh, apologies kind of keep right. trying to come in, right. they're, they're not going to. And this is where, sorry, just to go back, but the apology still needs to be genuine and authentic because oftentimes mm -hmm. what you have, it doesn't matter who cheats on whom, but let's say, let's say the wife cheated. So the husband is closed, but the wife also has to truly authentically apologize because I'm sure she has many good reasons why she cheated. Yeah. I'm sure she does, right? So it's also, so you could see the couples therapy or just getting it right is, is, is a bit challenging because even the person, as you meant, like cheated, right? They have in their mind really good reasons why. 
Maybe yep. she felt neglected or not heard or whatever the case may be, right? So to give this idea of authentic apology and also to wait for the other person to open up, that's where it's challenging to be a couples therapist because you have to acknowledge the fact that, yes, you heard him and also you had good reason in your mind of what, why you did it. And also you have to understand that the other person is super hurt and closed, yep. right? And trying to bridge that gap of, for one person to hold their reasons and also authentically apologize and also hold this person to be able to help them open up so they could hear the apology. Yep. That's where the challenge is. That's where a good therapist or a couples therapist is, is really seen and worth the time and effort yep. because that individual is actually able to move that conversation forward. Mm -hmm. uh, versus maybe a less experienced one where it's just the, it's just the conversation's always the same and it's stuck. Yep, 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 yep. Um, I agree with you. Just wanna do a little bit of a recap. Sure, that's okay. for sure. Um, right, apologizing. Right. <laughs> we all gotta do it. Um, and a lot of us stink at it, honestly. 100%. Now that I'm thinking about it. Uh, not, not very many of us are good at apologizing. So I guess like, like two, two quick takeaway tips mm -hmm. is, you know, know your audience, Right. really know your audience's love language or apology language and speak their language for sure you know if you're like a physical touch person and they're not right. and you're trying to apologize to them don't hug them right, <laughs> right? they're probably going to want to punch you in the face because they're upset with you well sometimes you get the whole get get away from me right like that's by the way like they're not interested that's not their way to do it <laughs> exactly yeah. right so so know your audience right um and two <clears throat> In arguments and, and fights that, that happen in your relationship, ask yourself that question. Would you rather be right, right. or would you rather be together? Right. And, and I think everyone chooses, I'd rather be together than right. 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 If, you if you'd rather be right, then I don't know, join a debate club or something. I don't know. <laughs> um, right. Nine times out of 10 people choose, I'd rather be together. Right. And so if you're focused on being together, at that point, we ditch the right wrong, I'm right, you're right, whatever the heck, and you sit and you understand the person's hurt from their point of view and their perspective. For sure. Um, and if you apologize from that standpoint, then I'm willing to bet everything will move much more smoothly. For sure. And then to your last point about being closed off, I'll let you summarize that yeah, one. So for me, it, it's one of those things to, this is really speaking more to the individual, I guess that's processing the hurt, be it infidelity or whatever the case may be. Just taking the time to see where you are with your level of actually accepting the apology and whether it's actually landing on mm -hmm. you. Um, so the person who was hurt also needs to do a little bit of work in terms of at least figuring it out if they're open to receiving it, right? Because the la what you really wanna avoid is sort of like you cognitively accepted the apology, but emotionally you're still closed off and you're still resentful, right? Like the relationship could potentially move forward, but it's gonna explode at some other point, right? Like, so the person receiving the apology, you have to do a little bit of work too in terms of, as I've mentioned, figuring out where you are with being willing to be open to receive it and seeing the changes in the behavior. So to me, that's such a, subtle and such a vulnerable but such an important point because without it moving forward is often challenging oh yeah absolutely well said and by the way there's so much more to say about apologizing right. th than just this so i don't know right. maybe, maybe we'll rant about it in the for future sure. too for sure um but that's all that we got for today so thank you everyone as always for tuning in and we'll catch you next time thanks so much bye guys